These three objectives will be covered in two parts. At the end of this part two video, you should be able to fully describe motion in terms of changing velocity, compare graphical representations of accelerated and non-accelerated motions, and apply kinematic equations to calculate distance, time, or velocity under conditions of constant acceleration. Chapter 2, Section 2, Acceleration Can Be Constant. Figure 2.4 is a strobe photograph of a ball moving in a straight line with constant acceleration. While the ball is moving, its image was captured 10 times in one second, so the time interval between successive images is 0.1 seconds. As the ball's velocity increases, the ball travels a greater distance during each time interval. In this example, the velocity increases by exactly the same amount during each time interval. Thus, the acceleration is constant. Because the velocity increases for each time interval, the successive change in displacement for each time interval increases. You can see this in the photograph by noticing that the distance between images increases while the time interval between, time, uh, between images remains constant. The relationship between displacement, velocity, and constant acceleration are expressed by equations that apply to any object moving with constant acceleration. Motion with constant acceleration. When velocity changes by the same amount during each time interval, acceleration is constant. The relationships between displacement, time, velocity, and constant acceleration are expressed by equation, equations shown on the following slides. These equations apply to any object moving with constant acceleration. These following equations will use the following symbols. Delta x is equal to displacement, v sub i is equal to initial velocity, v sub f is equal to final velocity, and delta t is equal to time interval. Displacement depends on acceleration, initial velocity, and time. Figure 2.5 on the screen here is the graph of the ball's velocity plotted against time. The initial, final, and average velocities are marked on the graph. We know that the average velocity is equal to the, to the displacement divided by the time interval. Remember, average velocity is equal to delta x divided by delta t. For an object moving with constant acceleration, the average velocity is equal to the average of the initial velocity and the final velocity. So, v sub average is equal to quantity v sub i plus v sub f quantity divided by 2, which is read as the average velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the final velocity all divided by 2. To find an expression for the displacement in terms of the initial and final velocity, we can set the expressions for average velocity equal to each other. So we have delta x divided by delta t, which is equal to the average velocity, is also equal to the quantity of initial velocity plus final velocity, all divided by 2. Multiply both sides of the equation by delta t, and it will give us an expression for the displacement as a function of time. This equation can be used to find the displacement of any object moving with constant acceleration. Final velocity depends on initial velocity, acceleration, and time. What if the final velocity of the ball is not known, but we still want to calculate the displacement? If we know the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the elapsed time, we can find the final velocity. We can then use this value for the final velocity to find the total displacement of the ball. By rearranging the equation for acceleration, we can find a value for final velocity. We see that acceleration is equal to delta v divided by delta t 
and we can draw that to also be equal to final velocity minus initial velocity all divided by delta t is also equal to acceleration. By adding the initial velocity to both sides of the equation, we get an equation for the final velocity of the ball. Velocity with constant acceleration. Final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration multiplied by the time interval. You can use this equation to find the final velocity of an object after it is accelerated at a constant rate for any time interval. If you want to know the displacement of an object moving with constant acceleration over some certain time interval, you can obtain another useful expression for displacement by substituting the expression for final velocity into the, exp into the expression for displacement. On the screen now, we can see the equation for displacement at the top of the screen. In the second equation, we substitute the expression for final velocity with constant acceleration that we derived in the previous screen, and then we simplify the equation and it gives us the equation for displacement with constant acceleration. This equation is useful not only for finding the displacement of an object moving with constant acceleration, but also for finding the displacement required uh, for an object to reach a certain speed or to come to a stop. For the latter situation, you need to use both this equation and the equation for velocity with constant acceleration from the previous slide. Final velocity depends on initial velocity, acceleration, and displacement. So far, all of the equations for motion under uniform acceleration have required knowing the time interval. We can also obtain an expression that relates displacement, velocity, and acceleration without using the time interval. This method involves rearranging one equation to solve for t and substituting that equation into another equation, making it possible to find the final velocity of a uniformly accelerated object without knowing how long it has been accelerating. Start with the following equation for displacement. Delta x is equal to one half quantity initial velocity plus final velocity quantity multiplied by delta t. Now multiply both sides by two. Next, divide both sides by the sum of initial velocity plus final velocity to solve for t and we end up with an equation delta t is equal to 2 delta x divided by the sum of initial velocity and final velocity. Now that we have an expression for delta t, we can substitute this expression into the equation for final velocity. In its present form, this equation is not very helpful because final velocity appears on both sides. To solve for final velocity, first subtract initial velocity from both sides of the equation as is shown in the equation at the top of your screen. Next, multiply both sides by the sum of initial velocity and final velocity to get all velocities on the same side of the equation as is shown in the equation in the middle of your screen. Now add initial velocity squared to both sides to solve for final velocity squared. Final velocity after any displacement. Final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times displacement. When using this equation, you must take the square root of the right side of the equation to find the final velocity. Remember that the square root may be either positive or negative. If you have been consistent in your use of the sign convention, you will be able to determine which value is the right answer by reasoning based on the direction of the motion. With the four equations presented in this section, it is possible to solve any problem involving one-dimensional motion with uniform acceleration. For your convenience, the equations that are used most often are listed in figure 2.6, or on the screen now. The first column of the table 
gives the equations in, the, in their standard form. For an object initially at rest, which is to say initial velocity is equal to zero. Using this value for initial velocity in the equations in the first column will result in the equations in the second column. It is not necessary to memorize the equations in the second column. If initial velocity is equal to zero in any problem, you can naturally derive this form of the equation. Referring back to the sample problems in the text for this chapter, you will be guided through using these equations to solve many problems. At this point, you should be able to fully describe motion in terms of changing velocity, compare graphical representations of accelerated and non-accelerated motions, and apply kinematic equations to calculate distance, time, or velocity under conditions of constant acceleration.